know that many of us have been looking forward to and waiting for our physical service so we are so excited to announce that we are going to start our physical church service next Saturday 2nd of April at 5 p.m. So we want to encourage as many of our church members and friends as possible to come and join us physically. But if you can't join us physically, you can still continue to watch our services which we will continue to put online. Uh, next, we want to introduce our new cell group pastor, Pastor Hong. So we are so glad that Pastor Hong is coming on board. He's going to take care of our cell groups and he's going to uh, be our new cell group pastor. So welcome, uh, Pastor Hong. Uh, next, we have really uh, good news. We want to congratulate uh, June and Jaina who just got married yesterday on the 26th of March. So congratulations to both of you. So really good news. So we are so thankful that we get to join in your uh, joy and your happy day. Uh, next, uh, Powerhouse Youth Service is also going to start physically next week. So they're going to start on the 2nd of April after the physical church service uh, from 6.30pm to 8pm. So all the youth, you are most welcome to come and join a physical powerhouse on the 2nd of April, 6.30 to 8 p.m. But if you can't join uh, physically, they will still uh, be able to, you, you will still be able to join uh, through video call. And finally, uh, tithes and offering. For those of you who want to give uh, tithes and offering, you can do, do so by uh, online banking and booths and our banking details are on the slide. So as we uh, have our service today, let's open our service with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for each and every person who is watching today. We ask that you just bless each and every person and each and every family, Lord. We pray that we will uh, have ears to hear what you are saying to us through the worship and through the word, Lord. Uh, cause us to be not only hearers but also doers of your word. And all, for all of our members, Lord, who are going through tough times, Lord, we speak peace, Lord, and encouragement to them. In Jesus' name, Amen. Come to the well that never runs dry Drink from the water, come and thirst no more Come all you sinners, come on His mercy Come to the table, He will satisfy Taste of His goodness, find what you're looking for Praise Him! Praise God! Praise 
will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so love. So love the world. Bring all your failures. Bring all your failures. Bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love Lord thank you for the nail pierced hands wash me in your cleansing flow now all I know your forgiveness and
Good morning to you, SI Bilikas, and friends who are joining us this morning. Welcome to Sunday Home Church. It's great to have you to be with us online. This morning, I'm excited to bring you a message entitled Cell Group Ministry. Now, let me start by saying this. I believe in Cell Group Ministry. Now, I am referring to small group meetings where Christians, friends, and family members come together for fellowship, for worship, for food, for encouragement, and meeting in homes. I'm also referring to online meetings that we have been having for the past two years because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, why? Why do I believe in cell group ministry? I believe because I have seen with my own eyes in and through cell groups the move of God. I have seen lives transformed, lives touched by God. I have seen people encountering Jesus. I have seen people making decisions for Jesus because they have experienced love, joy, peace from God. I have seen God touch hearts and ministering to deeper needs of people in and through cell groups. I have seen breakthrough, healing, restoration taking place in the lives of people. And I have also seen genuine relationship and friendship form in and through cell groups. The power of God, the blessings of God being released in cell groups, I have seen that, I have experienced that, and I believe and I look forward to more cell group meetings because I know that God will continue to move through cell groups. I am reminded of, of Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3, the whole psalm basically. It says in the English Standard Version, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there 
the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. You see, when we dwell in unity, when we Christians live together in harmony, there is the anointing of God, the oil of God coming upon us. And then there will be, or there are refreshing moments, moments where our soul is touched and restored by God, moments where our inner man, our spirit man is touched and restored by God ministered by God. And then there is this commanded blessing, the blessing of God that must come because the Lord has commanded it to come. We are talking about bestowed blessing. We are talking about promised blessing, the blessing of God that must come upon the lives of His children because He has commanded it to come. And then there is life and life everlasting. God is faithful. When we live together in harmony, we will experience the promise of God here. The anointing of God, refreshing moments of God, the blessing of God, and life, life forevermore. Now, let's talk about our church, SIB Likas English. We are a family church. We are a family church with a strong focus on cell groups. Now, what do I mean by that? It means that we as a church value families. We value relationships and friendships, not just among members, but also among between members and their friends outside of the church. We emphasize on building relationships with people in the church and beyond the church. Now, besides services in the church, we encourage members to meet in small groups in houses or in homes. These small groups are what we call cell groups. Now you will find that in different parts of the world, in different churches, different names are used. We have life groups, we have care groups, we have growth groups, we have connect groups. It doesn't matter because in essence, it is about people gathering together in smaller groups so that they can grow spiritually, so that they can worship, so that they can fellowship. Okay. Cell group ministry is the home-based ministry of the church, of our church. Now, in homes, like I have mentioned earlier, we have fellowship. We also share food. Who can resist food, right? We share food. We have fun activities like icebreakers, like games, and we worship. We worship using worship songs. We also worship by sharing our testimonies. We do Bible study and Bible discussion and we also pray for each other, for one another so that we know that we are supported in our faith journey. We also invite family members and friends who have yet to know Jesus to come to see how we Christians do life, to see how we live in harmony, to see how we worship God. We invite them to come to be a part of the cell groups. Right? This is what we call evangelism, reaching out to them, letting them see what we do. And we envision spiritual and numerical growth to take place in cell groups. This is what SIB Likas envisions. We envision that people will grow personally in their faith journey. And when we grow personally, you know, people will be also added into the cell groups and into the church. We, we envision discipleship to take place and church growth. And we believe when we build people in homes, we build up the church. I repeat, when we build people in homes, we build up the church. Let me say this. Cell groups are the building blocks of the church. Cell groups are the building blocks of the church. What are we building through cell groups? What are we exactly building through cell groups? We build up ourselves, you and I. We build up our faith, our spiritual health. We become healthier spiritually. We build up our spiritual growth. 
we grow into maturity through healthy relationships and friendships in the cell groups, through encouragement from cell members, and through the edification of the Word of God. When we study the Bible together, when we discuss the Word of God together, and we experience various kinds of support that help each other in the faith journey. This is how we grow. We have the support, various kinds of support. It could be spiritual support, it could be emotional support, it could be mental support, it could even be uh, physical support. Okay, To help people grow in their walk with Jesus, in their walk with God. And together, in cell groups, we are strengthened and we become stronger. Okay, This is what we expect to take place in cell groups. And when these things take place, we build ourselves, we build the church. Cell groups are the building blocks of the church. In cell groups, lives are being built up. And when cell groups become stronger and growing, the church will grow. Note that these are the things, all right? I repeat, note that the things that I mentioned earlier are the things that we actually have limited time and space to do to achieve during corporate worship in the church on Sunday, on a normal Sunday, or now at present on a Saturday afternoon when we have our physical service. Why? Because the focus of corporate worship is different. Okay, In corporate worship, we focus on corporate worship. We worship God together. Okay? We focus on announcement, directing the church, and we focus on the preaching of the Word of God. And now because of SOP, we cannot even have uh, a fellowship at the church compound because of social distancing. All right, there are, there are things that we are limited to and not able to do in corporate worship, but we can conveniently, comfortably, and effectively achieve these things in cell groups, fellowship, worship, discussions and conversations, genuine and meaningful conversations to take place in cell groups. Why? Because there is a smaller number of people, right? There is a smaller number of people. The environment is actually more relaxed because we are at home. People will feel at home and we can show better hospitality. We can show better hospitality, which makes people feel more at home. And when they are comfortable, when they are settled down, they are more open. They are more open to one another. They are more open to deeper conversation and they can develop genuine relationship. And we also can be more focused and more intentional on people when we are at home in a smaller group. And we do miss out a lot, you know. You know, we do miss out a lot if we are not a part of any cell group. When we just are involved in corporate worship. So I encourage that, that we don't miss out the benefits and the great things that happen in cell groups. Yes, I'm encouraging you to be a part of any of our cell groups in SIB Likas English. Now, I want to talk about Jesus, all right? I want to relate Jesus to cell group ministry. Jesus showed us how to live together. Jesus showed us how to live together. I would like to read John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The scripture tells us that Jesus, the word referring to Jesus, 
Jesus became flesh like us and dwelt among us. Jesus became human and made his home among us, according to the New Living Translation. What I want to emphasize here is that Jesus showed us that being distant is not the best option. Being distant from people, being distant from human is not the best option in terms of relationship building. Our God is not a distant God, but our God is a personal and intimate God. Jesus here also show us the importance of relating to one another in smaller groups. Now, I will support this claim with more scriptures later. Meeting up in homes, doing ministry in homes. In fact, Jesus frequently and consistently ministered in the homes of people. All right, now let's move on. I want us to refer to Mark. Mark chapter 1, verse 29 to 34. Mark chapter 1, verse 29 to 34. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, verse 29. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. Verse 31, And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. What I want to emphasize here are these. These are the key points that I want to bring to our attention this morning. Meeting in a small group was important and significant. Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. It was a small group initially. And then there was Simon's mother-in-law who was ill. Okay? Before the people came. So it was a small group meeting after a synagogue meeting. Okay? Now, ministry did not just take place in the synagogue, but also in the house. A personal need was met in the house. Whose needs? Simon's mother-in-law. She was ill with fever. She was down with fever. And Jesus brought to her healing. Jesus restored her health. There was the presence of God, the presence of Jesus. And then there was the power of God in the house. Jesus healed her. And after she was healed, she got up and she started to serve them, to serve them food. And people with needs were attracted with such ministry. And they came. They came and the, and, and the, the scripture tells us that the whole city was gathered at the door of the house. Just imagine that. It was a house ministry and Jesus was there. But because there was a personal need met in the house, the people in the city began to come. And Jesus also ministered to them. The scripture tells us that Jesus healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. The point that I want to make here is this. Jesus 
ministered in homes. And this actually was at the initial phase or the beginning phase of Jesus' ministry. From day one, in a sense, when Jesus started his public ministry, he already started ministering in houses, in the homes of people. Now let's read another part of the scripture right after that. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 12. Let's read. And when he returned to Capernaum, after some days, it was reported that he was at home. Jesus was at home. And many were gathered together, so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him, because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed which the paralytic lay. Verse 5, And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, take up your bed and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Key points. Again, Jesus was at home and Jesus was ministering at home. Preaching took place. Jesus took the opportunity to proclaim the word of God, to minister the word of God because people were gathered. And you know what? The faith of the people was rising. All the faith of the people had risen. And this was actually reflected by the four men who brought a paralyzed man to Jesus. And when they have reached that place, because it's, it was so packed with people, they could not enter, they went to the roof. They made an opening and they lowered that paralyzed man right in front of Jesus. Jesus saw their faith. Wow! And Jesus was moved. So what took place? God moved. What did Jesus do? Jesus released the forgiveness of sin. What else did Jesus do? Jesus released salvation and healing took place. That paralyzed man received those things that day. Why? Because there was an atmosphere of faith and Jesus moved. The authority of God and the authority of Jesus were revealed that day. And the people were amazed. They praised God. They glorified God. You know what? These things can take place in your cell group and in my cell group. Because what Jesus did back then can happen today. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I truly, truly believe that. I believe that God 
can move in our cell group. Let's move on. Another example, another part of the Bible. After that, Mark chapter 2, verse 13 to 17. Verse 13 to 17 of Mark chapter 2. Then Jesus, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation for this part of the scripture. Then Jesus went out to the lake shore again and thought the crowds that were coming to him. And he's, as he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home. Okay, take note of that, to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputed sinners. There were many people of this kind among Jesus' followers. Verse 16, But when the teachers of religious law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he told them, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Here, we learn about Levi or Matthew. Right, Matthew. He was a new follower of Christ. Right? Jesus does just call out to him and say, follow me, be my disciple. And Levi or Matthew responded to the call or to the invitation of Jesus. And after that, Matthew opened his home for a meal and invited Jesus and his disciples. Jesus accepted the invitation and it was an opportunity. Take note of this. It was actually an opportunity for Jesus to get to know Matthew better. For Jesus to have a glimpse into the life of Matthew, a new follower, a new disciple. It was one of Jesus' first steps to building relationship with Matthew. See, by being there, by accepting the invitation, by being in the house of Matthew, Jesus was investing into the life of Matthew. Jesus was investing into the life of Matthew. Matthew would later grow in his relationship with Jesus and in ministry. He was later, Matthew was later appointed as an apostle. Mark chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. Matthew was later sent out for ministry, for preaching, for proclaiming the kingdom of God and for doing miracles, performing miracles and healing. Matthew chapter 5, verse, sorry, Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 15. And Matthew would also later provide leadership to the early church. You see, Jesus invested in the life of Matthew very early. Jesus was there in his home, ministering to him, getting to know him better, building relationship with him. And Matthew wrote the Gospel of Matthew in the late 50s or early 60s AD. You see, that dinner was significant in the home of Levi in the home of Matthew was significant. Jesus' presence in the house of Matthew contributed to the fulfillment of Matthew's destiny in Christ. 
You see, when we visit the homes of our people, when we are there, being a vessel of God, investing into the lives of the people that God has called, that God has had chosen, we actually can contribute to the fulfillment of their destiny in Christ. So cell groups are very important. Open homes are very important. When there is any opportunity for us to be there, be there, be a blessing, be an encourager to speak into the life of people, to get to know them more, to invest into their lives because God can use us to help our friends and families live in fulfillment of God's calling in their lives. God can use us to be His vessels. And Jesus, back to the scripture, Jesus also took the opportunity to reach out to Matthew's circle of friends and associates. The tax collectors, the people do not like them because they collected tax on behalf of the Roman government. The Jews did not like them. And the sinners, who are these sinners? They are the irreligious Jews. They are the non-observant Jews. They don't practice their religion. They, these people were not righteous. I repeat, these people were not righteous. They were rejected by the Pharisees. They were considered scum, right? We read the word scum just now in the New Living Translation. And according to the, myth, uh, the message uh, translation, they are the crooks and the misfits. But Jesus got in touch with them. Where? In the house of Levi. In the house of a fellow tax collector. You see, it was practical because this group of people would not go to the synagogue. So, they were outside of the synagogues. But because of Matthew, who was a fellow tax collector, they did not mind going there, hanging out there. And Jesus took this opportunity to be in the house of Matthew so that he could reach out to the tax collectors and the sinners, the non-observant Jews. It was practical and it was non-threatening to the sinners, to the tax collectors. So we can learn from Jesus here. If we want to reach out to people who do not or who have not attended church yet, we don't plan meetings in the church. We plan meetings outside of the church so that we can get in touch with them. And the best place to meet is in the homes of people who know them. We can reach out to them there. Home ministry is very important very effective for reaching out purposes, for evangelism. Now, fast forward to the book of Acts. Right? There are many more things that we can learn from the gospel regarding cell groups and home ministry. But now we fast forward, right? because of time, we fast forward to Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. It talks about the early church. And I want to say this. The early church continued what Jesus had started. They continued to do the model that Jesus had given to them. Acts chapter 2 verse 42, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord 
added to their number day by day those who were being saved. The scripture tells us that every day, day by day, besides temple worship, the followers of Christ met together in homes. They broke bread in homes. The New King James Version tells us that they broke bread from house to house. They were visiting people from house to house. They ate together. They shared their meals together in houses, in homes. And there was gladness overflowing. There was simplicity of heart, New King James. They were glad, they were they have glad and sincere hearts. NIV. According to the New Century Version, they had joyful hearts. Glad and humble hearts. Good news translation. And the New Living Translation tells us that there was great joy and generosity. The followers of Christ praise God. You see, all these things were positive. Positive things that were taking place because they were meeting in homes, worshipping together, fellowshipping together. They were devoted. They were committed to not just to temple worship, but also to fellowship in houses. And salvation took place. The Lord added to their growth day by day. And we want to see this in our church. We want to see this in churches in our city, in Malaysia and outside of Malaysia. When we are committed, when we are disciplined as what the early believers do, we will continue to grow as a church, as individual, and we will see the kingdom of God expand. The church today must continue this biblical model. I repeat, the church today must continue this biblical model. We must continue to come together in smaller groups, opening our homes for cell group meetings. In doing so, we usher in the presence of God, the presence of Jesus into our homes. We allow ministry to take place in our homes, to bless our family members, to bless our neighbors, to bless our friends. We open our homes so that we can share, we can discuss, we can declare the word of God. Amen. So that the atmosphere of our homes is an atmosphere that is filled with the promises, the blessings, and the Rema word of God. We open our homes so that we can have fellowship with one another. And fellowship is very important because we are all created for relationship. We are not created for isolation. Isolation is, the, is a scheme of the enemy of our soul. We are created for fellowship and relationship. We open our homes to invite our friends and family members to come, to connect with them, those who do not attend church. And when we do that, we actually create space and allow God to do His work, to play His part. We create the environment and the atmosphere for God to move and to touch lives. I want to remind us Two verses from the book of Hebrew. And I actually share this with our cell group leaders a few weeks ago. And I want to share with the wider church today. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works not neglecting to meet together as is 
the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. What I want to say based on these two verses is this. Do not develop. Do not develop the habit of not wanting to meet together. Do not neglect to meet together. Because meeting together is important. It is in the Word of God. It is already stated that we need to meet together. And not wanting to meet together can become a habit. And we know how difficult it is to break habits that are not good. See, when we do not meet together, we cannot stir up one another. We cannot motivate one another. We cannot inspire one another effectively. We cannot love. How can we show love when we are distant from other people? Jesus came to live among us so that He can show love to us, so that we can experience love. Likewise, we need to come to the church. We need to go to the connect group, to connect the, the cell group, I mean, to connect with people so that we can show love and experience love. When we neglect to come together, it will be difficult for us to do good works. How can we do good works when we are not relating to others and when we are in isolation? Impossible. And when we neglect to come together, we cannot encourage one another. So, come together. Come together in cell groups so that we can motivate one another, so that we can love, show love to one another, so that we can do good works to one another, and so that we can continue to encourage one another. To conclude my message this morning, I just want to bring up these important points again. Our church, SIB Likas, is a family church and we do put a focus, a strong emphasis on cell groups. We want to see our cell groups grow. We want to see each individual in the cell groups to grow because cell groups are the building blocks of the church. Jesus emphasized ministry in homes. We have read from the book of Mark earlier. The early church continued with ministry in homes. In the book of Acts. And last but not least, let us not neglect to meet together in cell groups. Amen. Now before I pray, before I end the message this morning, I want to personally invite you, yes, you, those who are watching online, to be a part of our cell groups. We have to date eight cell groups that are running. We are still having online Zoom or Google Meet meetings. And we look forward to resuming our physical meetings in different homes very soon. All right, we have eight groups, Ecclesia, Yamta, United, Emmanuel, Oasis, Lighthouse, Living Stones, and Waymaker. So if you would like to know more about our cell groups, please contact us. Please contact our church office and we will, we will direct you to a cell group where we think it is best for you, which is near your place in KK, or if you are from other parts, you know, of, of, of the other parts of Malaysia, or even different parts of the world, and you want to really join our cell group, you can join us online. All right? Don't worry about that. With technology, we can connect. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the model that Jesus has set for us. We thank you for the power 
and the blessings that can come from small meetings, meetings with smaller number of people in homes. And Lord, we look forward to more blessings and power to flow in our church through our cell groups, even as we commit and devote ourselves to meeting in cell groups and not to neglect coming to cell groups, oh God. So Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to speak to our hearts, will continue to direct us and guide us and lead us, Lord, so that we can continue to glorify you in our cell group meetings, in our worship, in cell groups, and also in our corporate worship. Lord, continue to protect all of us, continue to build your hedge of protection over our lives, and we just pray that you will continue to bless everything that we do as a church and as individual Christian, Lord. We want to glorify you and we want to give you praise in all that we do, in all that we say, and the way we live. Thank you, Lord. I just commit all of us into your mighty hands. Bless us. Give us a great week ahead and help us to come back to worship you with more faith. Lord, thank you for your goodness in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we ask and we pray. Thank you once again for joining our Sunday Home Church. God bless you and see you again next week. Bye.